Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at colour in organic molecules. Organic compounds are usually white and this is because although they absorb electromagnetic radiation, it is not in the visible region of the spectrum and therefore we see the compounds as white. Those that do absorb light within the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum do so because of their ele electronic structure. The reason behind the colour of organic molecules is due to the molecular orbitals. If you're unfamiliar with molecular orbitals, I would recommend that you watch my video on molecular orbitals, which I will link down below in the description box. Here we have represented some molecular orbitals. I have not shown you the corresponding atomic orbitals as they would be quite complex off to the side. Here we are going to imagine that we have overlapped we have had end on overlap of two atomic orbitals to produce a sigma orbital and for this one here we've had side on overlap of two pi of p orbitals to produce a pi orbital correspondingly that means that we will have a sigma star and a pi star orbital If we are to fill these with electrons, we will fill them from the lowest orbital to the highest orbital and we are going to fill them with four electrons. So we're filling the sigma first and then the pi and then our antibonding sigma star and pi star are empty. We call this orbital here the highest occupied molecular orbital. and that gets shortened to HOMO. This orbital here, the next one up from the HOMO, is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So here we have the highest occupied molecular orbital. This one is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. and that gets shortened to LUMO. The gap between the HOMO and the LUMO is equal to some form of energy, so some photon of light, and usually the gap between the HOMO and the LUMO is so large that the energy that is absorbed is out with the visible spectrum. So this HOMO-LUMO gap is equal to some energy which will correspond to some sort of wavelength of light and normally that wavelength will be in a region that is out with the visible spectrum. Here we're going to look at an example of a molecule which does produce colour. This molecule is much larger than the previous molecule that we looked at and that allows for a more complicated molecular orbital system. Here at the bottom we have our bonding molecular orbitals and at the top we have the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. This one here will be our HOMO and we'll just fill in some electrons here. And this one here will be our LUMO. One of the other requirements of a molecule which is organic to have colour is to have a series of alternating single and double bonds known as a conjugated system. This can also be achieved by having multiple benzene rings bonded together as well. We'll come on to benzene later on in the course. The section of the molecule, the conjugated system, which allows colour to be seen is called the chromophore. By having a larger, more complicated molecule, you end up causing the gap between the HOMO and the LUMO to become smaller. That means that the energy that it can absorb is now lower and therefore will be in the visible region so it can absorb wavelengths of visible light. It will absorb a photon of, wave of visible light 
and will allow an electron to be promoted to the LUMO and in doing so the rest of the light will be transmitted much in the same way as a D2D transition within a transition metal. So you will see the, you will observe the opposite uh, colour. The larger the chromophore, then the smaller the gap between the HOMO and LUMO, so the smaller the energy that can be absorbed. So that will change the colour of the molecule that you see. In this example here, you're being asked to identify the chromophore in each molecule and work out which molecule you would predict to be yellow and which you would predict to be orange. The first part of this, chem of this question asks you to identify the chromophore in each molecule. So the chromophore is the series of alternating single and double bonds which you find throughout the molecule, which I am highlighting in green. The second part of the question asks you to identify which of these molecules you would predict to be yellow and which you predict to be orange. For them to appear yellow and orange, they must absorb the complementary colour and therefore transmit yellow and orange light. So if you were to look in the data book, you would find that to get the yellow, you need to absorb violet, which is quite high energy, and to get orange, you would be absorbing blue, which is lower energy than violet. So here where we've got a rather long conjugated system, your homolumal gap will be smaller. which means that the energy absorbed will also be smaller. For the smaller conjugated system, your homolumal gap is slightly larger, and that means that the energy required will also be larger. So as we looked at here, violet is more energetic than the blue, therefore this molecule you would expect to be yellow, and this one you would expect to be orange. This molecule is in fact beta carotene, which you find in carrots, and this is vitamin A. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you find it helpful. Please remember to subscribe if you've not already and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye!